I'm Adriana Baranek, uh, CEO of Miadria Group, and here with me again is Moana Baranek, our CTO. Uh, today we will be talking about a very hot topic, uh, the topic that is like the never-ending story, and it always uh, uh, brings uh, so much um, of um, confusion. Um, uh, everybody claims to have cloud um, today. So it's like a very in word, it's like a buzzword that everybody is using. Uh, but what is really the uh, difference between hosting and the cloud? Can you tell us more about it, please, man? Yeah. Uh, thank you for asking. That is a very good question. So many people uh, used to have their websites and uh, email service um, on hosting. So that they were using local hosting providers and historically that was the most popular way to do it. Last few years there was a development uh, where uh, both Microsoft and Google uh, provided office productivity suits. So suddenly you got Office 365 and G Suite where you would get uh, more performant email service and you would get office productivity tools delivered from the cloud. So uh, that is something that most uh, most uh, users uh, would currently use as a software as a service product delivered from public cloud. And unlike hosting providers, so uh, these public cloud uh, providers have much uh, uh, much more robust and scalable email service. Mm -hmm. So if you are relying on email for, for your business, it is uh, now time to reconsider whether it makes sense to keep your email on-prem or on uh, local hosting providers or move it to public cloud providers like Google, Microsoft, Amazon also supports uh, email services and uh, um, Alibaba, some other big uh, public cloud providers. There are other major differences. So uh, local hosting would most probably use uh, simple tools like cPanel that would enable their users to manage uh, websites, uh, emails, uh, some uh, uh, a limited number of users, while public cloud providers would actually give users uh, identity management. So th they would get Azure Active Directory service or Google Identity or on Amazon, they, they can go with full blown uh, Active Directory service, managed Active Directory service. And if you integrate your mobile phones, so that, that is also a big difference. This uh, public cloud providers work well with mobile devices, unlike uh, local hosters who doesn't actually support uh, uh, mobile device management and, and stuff like that. Plus, if you are using software as a service applications, uh, you will also benefit if you move from local hosting provider environment to uh, mm -hmm. public uh, public cloud uh, providers. Mm -hmm. So, in essence, uh, you know, uh, public cloud offers more services uh, from the cloud, and uh, they are more flexible and. Uh, uh, a lot of people are using it while not being aware that they are using public cloud. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so in the, in the um, real world, so most probably if you are using a hosted email, then you would have like some service where you would have like, I don't know, you have like 50 uh, email boxes. And then if you want to upgrade your uh, service to hundreds email boxes, then it would most probably be something that would require a lot of effort on the, on the part of the hosting company. Mm -hmm. Most probably. Yes. yes. And, and no. you would be very so limited with the amount of the megabytes that you, you can uh, use and uh, 
you will be like constricted. And when we're talking about a big public cloud, the main difference is that it would be unlimited, basically. So it's not only that. So uh, historically, uh, internet service providers, telecoms, and others were bundling email service as an add-on to their internet connectivity mm -hmm. and uh, email was not really treated as a business service. Mm -hmm. So uh, you could have problems with security spam, uh, uh, antivirus, uh, 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 backups of your mm -hmm. uh, emails and uh, 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 overall administration and management of email service would be uh, usually very poor plus if you would need support from your provider you would most probably end up in some uh, long queue waiting for, yeah. for an answer exactly. so uh, it's enough for private or for, or for some basic email service but if you really need uh, business email then you should move to public cloud one true shift that we have seen in like, like last 10 years is that um, before you used to have like a premium service in all respects uh, with regard to your IT when you were at work and when you got home then you would have some very poor service and then you would have to struggle a lot. Uh, but in the last 10 years, people started using Gmail and all those beautiful cloud services more and more for their personal life. And when they come to the office, then they have uh, some horrible restrictions uh, imposed by Outlook and uh, the services um, provided by the local exchange server or something like that. So this is also one area where we can say that uh, hosting or the old world with hosting, we can also put in now the on-premise stuff. Um, well, it's not really, but almost as, as if it is. And we will be talking more about differences between on-premise and, on, and the cloud uh, in, in next videos. Um, but also, uh, when we are talking about, um, like, uh, okay, so you, you want to publish uh, an application and uh, you're using uh, the hosting, uh, type of service uh, on a server. What would be the difference to that and to using the big public cloud uh, service no. uh, to push that, your Yeah, application? that fine is no-brainer. So, uh, if you are uh, uh, moving legacy applications, then uh, even uh, uh, with uh, virtual machines, you have more choices with public cloud, they both, so most public cloud uh, providers will support both VMware mm -hmm. and uh, uh, Citrix or uh, other very popular enterprise uh, suites. And you, you can have a lot of additional services for monitoring, for logging, for, for stuff like that. While with uh, hosting, you end up with a kind of a telco hotel mm -hmm. of uh, equipment where they can offer some basic uh, maintenance of uh, hardware and some very limited number of services. So, well, it is, uh, of course, possible to move your virtual machines from on-prem to uh, hosting environments. You will not be able to integrate it with uh, more advanced services offered uh, on public cloud. Plus, you will be limited uh, with number of supported platforms mm -hmm. and uh, a variety of of virtual machines that hosters can offer. Mm -hmm. And when we are talking about the hypothetical scenario, so you have an application, you publish, you know, for instance, on Google Play Store, and it's doing so well that the traffic has been uh, um, uh, rising rapidly. Uh, if you are with, uh, with a hosting company, then you will be calling their support and they will be saying, okay, so we will just increase a little bit uh, the, the speed of your uh, application and stuff like that. But basically, they will not be able to provide for the huge uh, uptake in your application and the huge uptake in the traffic so, of your application. Uh, uh, so, uh, regarding legacy applications that are still based on uh, uh, virtual machines, 
uh, of course, if you would be able to rewrite your application to become serverless, most probably you would gain uh, efficiency, it would become much cheaper and more scalable. Mm -hmm. But then again, you have to invest and uh, rewrite your application. So uh, a lot of companies will not uh, uh, start set, set projects unless it's really mm -hmm. uh, necessary for some reasons. If you are developing new applications, it really doesn't make sense mm -hmm. to uh, keep old models. So uh, you know, using uh, uh, serverless architectures will bring more uh, more benefits for uh, for sure. And uh, regarding uh, hosting environments, they are just not able to cope with providing uh, mm -hmm. all services needed to support. Uh, uh, to, to support enterprises. Yeah, so to be blunt, uh, we had this question from one of our viewers about how to tell if you're using the cloud, if you're using a hosting company. Uh, it all comes down to money. It all comes basically down to does a, a company have the expertise? Do they have the security experts? Do they have the technology experts? Do they have the know-how how to build a proper cloud? Because I can say that I have a cloud and I have, yeah, I can just have two servers. And that's what a lot lots of companies today are doing in an effort to appeal to the market and to appeal to this big buzzword saying uh, this is the cloud. But um, uh, when we are talking about the big public cloud, can you emphasize once more how important it is to have a proper security, to have a proper know-how, to have a proper way how to uh, safeguard even your uh, customers from the cyber attacks? Can you tell us more about that? Please? So it's very simple. Today, companies and even uh, their users, persons, uh, have their uh, life uh, digitized from uh, using their uh, bank accounts, to medical records, to uh, m many other uh, very important uh, mm -hmm. data. Or, or, uh, a lot of people are keeping it on mobile phones or in mm -hmm. their uh, email accounts. And of course, identity services that offer uh, not only two-step authentication, mm -hmm. but that have artificial intelligence tracking if someone is trying to break into your account, mm -hmm. but, uh, whether there are some suspicious uh, uh, activities mm -hmm. uh, uh, going on that, that can notify you on uh, many devices and give you opportunity to notice that something unusual is going on, that so someone else is trying to log in with, uh, with your uh, credentials. It's really of paramount concern. Mm -hmm. So if, if you are, uh, for example, using uh, Google Identity, then uh, you would not only protect your emails, you would protect your mobile phone and you would protect access to your, uh, uh, to your data. There are more advanced uh, schemes than uh, simple one-time passwords mm -hmm. uh, on, on mobile phones. So th th there are FIDO, uh, stakes mm -hmm. so ma many reporters and ma many uh, people who are uh, mm, I wouldn't say afraid but aware of the danger that someone would uh, mm -hmm. steal their data would opt for uh, such a secure solution and if you go with a telecom or with a, a classical hosting provider, where a huge number of people have access to your data and it's not yeah. properly uh, protected, it can leak uh, without uh, a notification to you or to, to parties involved uh, in your business, you are taking kind of a necessary risk. Mm -hmm. So. From, from that perspective, it's much safer to go with the uh, public cloud to manage your uh, identity than with, uh, with the hosting that just cannot keep up mm -hmm. with requirements. 
So we can say that customers should not be modest. They should not be satisfied with having uh, the same service that they had like five or ten years ago. They should ask for yes. more. They should be asking tough questions. They should not be satisfied with uh, having, I don't know, to, okay, so my website will not be up for like an hour because they are having a maintenance or something like that. Uh, I have an SLA that is like 90% instead of proper 99.9% and stuff like that. So they should be asking tough questions. They should uh, they should contact definitely companies that work with the cloud like Meandria or some other company that knows what it, what cloud real cloud is and demand that their data is properly stored, properly taken care of, and uh, that they can uh, scale up their business, that they can scale down when needed uh, without incurring uh, additional costs. And uh, basically that's it. Is there anything else that you would like to add at this point? Thank you for watching us and hope to see you soon. Thank you so much, Juan. Thank you and have a great day and we will be recording more videos soon. Thank you. Bye. Bye.